It's almost the year 2024, and we're about to see the AIM Act, which was passed back in the year 2020, take a huge hike here. And of course, the AIM Act is the law that was passed that is basically phasing down 410A refrigerant in our country. The initial reduction began last year with a 10% reduction in HFC production, and by next year, we're going to see an additional 30%. So we're looking at 40% overall. Imagine if we were to cut out 40% of gasoline in our country, for example, just within a couple years. That's the type of effect we're looking at. Of the entire heating and air industry, 40% of the production of the refrigerant that's used predominantly in residential especially is going to be gone. It's going to be phased down that much. And so because of that, I wanted to do this video to talk about three things that I think we're going to see come from this. The first one is pretty obvious. We're going to see price hikes. We're going to see a tremendous jump in pricing for 410A refrigerant. And luckily, by the year 2025, we're going to see equipment start coming out with these newer refrigerants, which will affect this dramatically, right? So as we see the demand for this product go up, obviously the prices are going to go up. The supply is just simply not going to be there. It's going to be phasing down. And as time goes on, the AIM Act is supposed to have 14A refrigerant phased down all the way down to 85% by the year 2036. And so obviously, just like we've seen before, when we saw R22 get phased out, we're going to see 410A have this dramatic price increase. I think last year when we saw the 10%, I don't know that it affected things dramatically. I think maybe there were some price hikes, but there's other things that played into that too, like inflation and so on, all the other crazy things going on in the world. But I do think that you're gonna see a dramatic price increase in 410A refrigerant. The second thing I think you may see is alternative refrigerants. During the making of this video, and according to this article I just read, there are no EPA approved drop-in refrigerants for 410A refrigerant. Now we did a video a while back where we talked about a refrigerant that claimed to be the first replacement refrigerant for 410A, but I do anticipate as time goes on, maybe seeing more folks look at an alternative just like we did with R22. Now, hopefully we do see some alternatives, some options for folks, even if they're not necessarily the best option, having multiple options will hopefully affect that first one we talked about, which is price. If consumers decide, hey, we're going to maybe go down this other path, maybe that'll lower the demand being that the supply will be so low. And then the final thing that we're already seeing is we're gonna see consumers, you, we're gonna see a lot of you making very different decisions, especially we're gonna see you waiting. You're gonna be waiting for these new refrigerants to come out, waiting for this new equipment to come out, and that's gonna play hand in hand in this, right? So when you have a contractor come to you next year and they'll say, hey, your compressor has failed to replace that, we're going to have to use X amount of refrigerant, refrigerant's gotten right pricey, here's that price, you may consider a new system, maybe you weren't considering a new system, but because of that playing a role in it, you may decide, oh yeah, we're gonna just go ahead and bite the bullet and get a new system, but because they're not out yet, you may have to wait. Maybe you'll have a couple portable ACs, maybe you'll rough it for a little bit to try to get through to heat and cool your home until that new equipment has come out. Now we do see some of the HVAC manufacturers starting to go ahead and roll out some of these products. I know Daikin came out with their Atmosphera, which was a mini split using R32 refrigerant last year. The problem with that is not all states during the making of this video have approved A2L refrigerants yet. Now I do think that that's coming. I don't think it's going to be much longer that we will see them all on board or at least most of them. But obviously if the products aren't there, you can't install it, right? And so you might see folks like you just waiting instead of putting all this money into a system that may be bleeding you of money. To stop the bleeding, you may just kind of bite the bullet, wait a little bit longer, and then jump to these new systems with the new refrigerants. Let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. The AIM Act is moving right along. Next year, we're going to be up to 40% on this phase down of 410A refrigerant. Love to hear your thoughts about that. Comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, I think you enjoyed this one even more. It's where I talk about Daikin's newest products coming up that they haven't even released to the public yet. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.